Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Lin Sang. I'm here to talk about Selenium and Istio pushing the boundaries of what's possible for zero trust. I know this is the last session of the day, so if you are a little bit tired, I understand, so feel free to just stretch yourself a little bit before we just get started. Um, a little bit of introduction about me. By the way, I'm standing on the weirdest uh, speaking podium. There is an elevated step, so if I fall, please come to our stage to rescue me. So I'll try not to fall, so you see there's a height difference here. Uh, a little bit of introduction of me. I work for a small company called Solo.io. I'm leading the open source uh, organization in a small company there. I'm being one of the founding members of the Istio project. I made a lot of contributions. I'm also a technical oversight committee member and steering committee member. I actually wrote two books about Istio, Istio Explained, and most recently, Istio Ambient Explained. So how many of you heard of uh, Istio before? Okay. How many of you heard of uh, the new thing we're doing in the community called Istio Ambient? A few of you. Okay, cool. We're going to introduce that briefly. And a, a little bit more about me. Before I joined Solo about two years ago, I worked for a giant technology company called IBM. And right before I leave IBM, I went to our corporate directory and took a screenshot of how many patents I had, uh, which is under IBM name, but I was a co-inventor. So that was uh, a little bit over 200. Um, so that's a little bit of fun fact about me. Um, a little bit more about our company, uh, Solo.io. Uh, how many of you actually heard of our company? Wow, thank you. So it's a small company. When I join, it's like 25 people. So I'm like the 25th employee. Very cool. Right now we have about 160, 170 people. It was funded by Edit. We're focusing on the API gateway, application network connectivity space. Um, one thing I really like what our company do is we offer free trainings and certification tests through our academy program where we provide a lab in the cloud environment and you can run through the labs and do your quizzes and get a badge. So if you're interested in that, that's the QR pro, uh, scan for that and it's completely free. So with that, we're going to talk about uh, today's agenda. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, CNI and Selenium first, and then we're going to dive into some background ar around service mesh and Istio, and then we're going to talk about best practice for implement zero trust architecture, what is zero trust, and how do you integrate Selenium and Istio together, and we're going to do show and tell through a demo. So uh, that's the flow. So before we get started about Selenium, I'd like to talk about Container Networking Interface, which is CNI. So how many of you are using a CNI today? Wow, I would expect more than a few hands. <laughs> So, um, so CNI is it's the component between container runtime and the network implementation. CNI basically uh, plugins are called whenever you deploy a pod into Kubernetes, when your pods get created, or when your pods get removed. Um, the CNI plugins are, uh, are responsible for setting up the network configuration, such as routes for your pods, and it's also responsible for um, assign an IP address for your pod. Uh, the examples of CNI out there are uh, Selenium is one of the most popular one, Calico as well, uh, and different cloud providers typically have their own CNI. Uh, typically, most of the Kubernetes distro has their own CNI and some support more than one CNI. So um, that is CNI, and then let's jump into Cilium. So what is Cilium? Cilium is a cloud native solution for providing, securing, and observing network connectivities between workloads and typically running in Kubernetes, but it also supports workloads running on VM and other environments. And what's most interesting about Selenium is it's using evolutional technology called eBPFs. So a lot of people think about Selenium, they think about eBPF because that's really where Selenium initially shine compared with the other CNIs. So what is eBPF? How many of you know what eBPF is? 
All right. Um, excellent. So uh, eBPF extended Berkeley uh, packet filter, uh, it runs in the kernel space to process packages. So what's nice about eBPF is it provides the sandbox environment, allow you to extend your kernel um, and then running your program in the sandbox environment. It's designed for faster processing and safe processing and it's supposed to scale much better than running in the user space program. Uh, so if you look at the traditional IP tables uh, without eBPF, for example, uh, the node IP table, by the way, there are two IP table box here. The first one on the top is the node level IP table. And uh, typically in the case of uh, service mesh and sidecar, uh, there's also an IP table uh, within the part name space to config the IP uh, tr uh, the traffic redirection between the container and the sidecar. So uh, typically this is the, uh, the network flows through the virtual ethernet uh, between the pod and also the IP tables uh, for the node. Uh, with eBPF, it kind of shortcut the circuit, right? So instead of going through the IP table, it would call programs uh, as sandbox inside of the kernel directly, so it's a little bit more efficient. So what SOIAM does is leverage this great uh, functionality from uh, eBPF, uh, what the kernel provides, to allow you to connect your workloads through uh, layer, set, uh, layer three networking and also the typical overlay uh, networking model. Uh, Cilium builds on top, uh, Cilium first of all implements the CNI, uh, container network interface we talk about, and it also has its own enhancement uh, on top of the network policy, the standard Kubernetes network policy. So they have, uh, Cilium has Cilium network policy. Um, Cilium also provide a very nice visualization tool called Hubble. It allows you to uh, visualize what's going on within your pods and your network. Uh, you can also uh, have encryption config. This is not optionally enabled, but you could config with encryption with IPsec or WellGuard. So that's all possible. So the architecture of Cilium is, uh, is pretty straightforward. So the Hubble relay provides the UI, comp the, the Hubble UI components. Uh, there is Cilium CNI that implements the CNI. Um, and then the Cilium agent is deployed as a daemon set running on every single of your Kubernetes nodes. And the Cilium operator sets up everything at the beginning of the install and makes sure every single other component is operating and running. Um, let's spend a second to talk about network policy because in order for you to use any CNI, you have to kind of know what network policy is. How many of you know what network policy is? Okay, so you guys, most of you already know network policy, excellent. So essentially a nutshell controls traffic and layer three and layer four. And there are three components of network policy, right? Pod selector to select which part your network policy is applying to. There's a in, typically an ingress policy and egress policy, and these are optional. So you could have one or the other or both together. Um, so this is a simple example of a network policy apply in the default namespace. It's applying to this uh, pod uh, that has row uh, DB and it has this particular ingress configuration to say I'm allowing incoming traffic from these IP block, these namespaces, the pods uh, that has this particular label on this particular TCP port uh, 6379 and it also have a similar block to control outgoing egress traffic. So uh, network policy, I think it's pretty straightforward, so I'm not going to spend more time on this. One thing interesting about network policy is if you actually go to Kubernetes documents and read what's uh, what's actually not in network policy, you'll find out it's only for layer three and layer four, right? It doesn't have any cluster-wide support, uh, anything TLS related, they are not really um, supported in the policy spec. 
uh, it doesn't allow you to do node specific configuration on your policy, uh, so it doesn't support denying policy, so there is a bunch of limitation. So what SOIN brings to the table is, hey, in, on top of the network policy, which we love, we also provide our own CRD called Cilium Network Policy that provides the enhanced uh, ingress and egress policy and also supports the D-line policy. Uh, and then you can also use observability through Hover UI to visualize network flow, troubleshooting network problems between your parts. So that's a quick rundown of uh, CNI and also Slim is one of the most popular examples of CNI out there. Uh, let's go down to talk about service mesh. So how many of you know what service mesh is before attending the session? Excellent. So in a nutshell, service mesh is a programmable interface uh, framework that allows you to connect secure observed microservices. Uh, so typically service mesh has a sidecar architecture, right? Uh, when your application A calls application B, it goes through the sidecar captures all the incoming and outgoing traffic and kind of using the sidecar to mediate the traffic in, in between your, uh, your components, your uh, your applications, and then you as a platform engineer or operator programs what the sidecar wants uh, needs to do through uh, the service mesh control plan, typically using declarative uh, YAMLs. Uh, for example, in Istio, users using Istio policies to deploy that to Kubernetes cluster, and then Istio control plan watches uh, what user deploys, uh, the operator deploys, and then correspondingly program the sidecars to medi mediate the traffic. Uh, this is a CNCF landscape. Uh, I don't know if you noticed new, it still is a CNCF graduate project now, so uh, it's certainly the most popular service mesh out there. There are uh, thousands of production customers uh, referenced on istio.io. Uh, last year, we started the donation to CNCF uh, as an incubation project, and recently we just graduated uh, from CNCF as a graduation project project. Uh, and what's really interesting in uh, Istio is ambient service mesh that was launched uh, in 2020. Two, and essentially it proposed uh, a new deployment model on data plane to allow you to run uh, your application without sidecar. So let's talk about uh, ambient mesh uh, briefly. This is a new architecture we are doing, um, well, the the proxy is actually running outside of your application container. So what's the benefit of that, right? When you not have the proxy running outside, when you have the proxy running outside of your container, you essentially, the moment you include your application into the mesh, service mesh, you don't have to restart your application, right? So whenever the proxy has a CVE, you don't have to restart your application pod. So that's really cool. And from a resource utilization, perspective, you could potentially have uh, hundreds of um, pods that's on the same node sharing the same uh, proxy. And we kind of, the one thing uh, it still does really interesting is we kind of separate layer four and layer seven separately. So for layer four, we believe the CVE attack surface is very small because it's focused on very limited functions. So we have this multi-tenancy proxy, uh, which we call it a zero trust tunnel, uh, which is the uh, orange uh, box here that mediate the traffic for the entire node, uh, regardless uh, whether you are running application A or B or C. Um, you might be wondering, what about layer seven traffic, right? So Envoy, for example, the most popular proxy out there is not designed for multi-tenancy, right? In this case, um, how do you mediate traffic for layer seven uh, 
that you don't you want to minimize the blast ratio radius, and you don't want one tenant, uh, one noise tenant impacting other noise tenant. Uh, so with that design uh, requirements in mind, we designed uh, a waypoint proxy, which essentially controls uh, traffic for a particular tenant scope that you feel comfortable. So that tenant scope could be a namespace or could be a service account, whichever you feel comfortable. So you could potentially deploy a waypoint proxy, which is an optional component, only needed if you need a layer seven processing. You deploy that uh, waypoint proxy to control the traffic coming into your pod. All right, so this is the announcement uh, we made for Ambient Mesh. Uh, we, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about Ambient, I encourage you to ch check out Istio.io. Uh, there's a blog about Ambient, uh, introduce the data plane mode for Istio without sidecar. And this is the blog. I'm actually one of the co-author of the blog. Uh, so that is service mesh and most popular service mesh is still out there. Now we're going to talk about zero trust a little bit, right? So how these two connect to each other. So uh, traditional security uh, is typically focused on edge security. So what does that mean? You think your edge is secure, right? Everything inside of the surrounding inside, uh, you, tend, you tend to think it's safe, right? So you kind of wrap up everything here with firewall and then everything inside, uh, it's maybe a monolithic. It's not a big problem in that case. Um, so you think it's uh, safe, right? So uh, a privileged user can get through a VPN and access uh, what's in your data center. But a hacker, if they actually get into the firewall, uh, they could potentially access to your application. This may not be a huge deal if you're using like monolithic big application. However, as people are moving to cloud, moving to microservices, uh, this model uh, based on edge, um, the boundary as your security, um, the edge-based security really proposed increased complexity, uh, attack surface uh, with more vulnerable, right? With the increased um, breaking into microservices, you know, every single bit of connection could cause problems if you trust everything. If a hacker gets into um, the firewall, then they essentially gets into every single communication of your services, which is not ideal. So that's the increased attack service. So what zero trust essentially is, how many of you actually know what zero trust is? Um, how many of you are implementing zero trust in your organization? Excellent. So by default is you don't trust anything. So if I said anything wrong, please correct me. Um, and that is inside or outside of your network, right? So you verify everything that you are trying to connect to a system before you're granting access, right? So you want to give um, the least privilege and deny everything by default and only give the privileges if you need to. Uh, so that's uh, what zero trust is. You want to make sure the identity you can verify and then you want to grant the least privilege access. And what's also interesting is defense in depth, right? So how many of you heard of that concept of defense in depth? Excellent. So it's a concept commonly used in security, right? That while you layer multiple layers together. Um, so in this case, um, for example, CNI provides layer three, layer four, a service mesh like Istio provides layer seven. So if you have a security vulnerability, let's say in Istio, maybe in your Envoy proxy, um, well, your layer seven, maybe it's a little bit weak, but potentially your layer three and layer four could pick up. Right. So this is uh, where um, the layering defense in depth can really help. Right. In this example, uh, your sidecar proxy may be compromised, or your application container could be compromised. Right. So, um, or maybe you have security vulnerability in the cluster. Right. So in this case, if one layer fail. Uh, it can fall back to the other layer to have it enforced if the other layer can still be enforced. Um, 
The other example uh, we also provide uh, in Istio is also allow you to control external uh, service access, right? So for example, you, your microservice needs to reach out to Amazon or Google services or that Mongo database uh, service. Um, so in this case, uh, Istio provides two modes where you can allow any external access or you can config to register only um, the ones on the registry you can access but both of these have security problems. Uh, certainly allow any has security problem. The way registry only works is we, uh, we help you can program the Envoy config to allow access to um, the external service. However, if a hacker uh, has um, gets into one of the Envoy CVE and uh, you know gets into the Envoy proxy and they could potentially reprogram the Envoy proxy and allow access. So that's not really very secure at all. So what we do recommend um, with defense in depth in this case is uh, use network policy. So for instance, we could potentially use network policy to say your application A is only allowed to call um, pods within the cluster. Uh, so there's no external out of the cluster access. And then whenever you need to call an external service, in this case weather.com, you always have to go through the egress gateway. And then from the egress gateway, you can have the gateway uh, initiate a TLS origination for you. So instead of call HTTP weather.com, the gateway would initiate HTTPS uh, uh, weather.com for you. Um, so in this case, you would potentially using layering the network policy and then layering uh, Istio policy on top of the network policy to implement this uh, secure egress control architecture. So with that, I'm going to jump into the demo. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is starting prepare the environment. Uh, so what this does is uh, it's going to deploy a virtual machine in the cloud. Uh, we contract a third company called Instruct. So we basically we're paying for this company to provide a cloud environment for us. Uh, as the environment is standing up, I'm actually going to go through the demo scenario briefly with you so you guys know what uh, I'm going to demo. So um, first of all, we're going to deploy a Kubernetes cluster um, after the environment is up running. Then we're going to install um, Cilium. And then we're going to install Istio. So just making sure you know we have all the key uh, um, infrastructure out there to help us in, uh, to build this geo trust architecture with defense in depth. Um, and then we're going to deploy some test applications. So really simple applications. The sleep application, which essentially it's just a curl command, allow you to run commands, and also the HTTP Bing application, uh, which uh, you can call and it prints out uh, some response. Uh, and the HTTP Bing also have um, uh, external site, so you can reach httpbing.org, and which would give you some uh, response. So it's basically useful for testing. So that's what we are using for testing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to deploy network policy for our environment. And uh, that's not enough though, because that doesn't help you. That helps control something, but doesn't help to enforce uh, at layer seven. It doesn't help you to do controlled egress traffic, right? So that then we're going to layer Istio on top by deploy Istio policy. Uh, we're going to deploy uh, zero trust to deny everything. And then we're going to config um, the sleep pod. Whenever it calls HTTP.org, it's going to route the traffic to egress gateway. And then the egress gateway is going to perform TLS origination on behalf of the sleep pod. All right, let's see if we have the environment up running. Hopefully, finger cross it's running now. Um, and I'm hoping the Wi-Fi here is good. It's perfect. I feel like I'm missing a command prompt. So, oops. <laughs> Thought it would be easier. Uh, but it seems it's still transferred the data. 
Uh, in the meanwhile, does anybody have any questions as I wait? Maybe I should open my hot, my hot spot for this because I don't think the network is that great. Cellular personal hotspot. All right, uh, I'm going to hit the refresh button one more time and I'm going to get on my mobile phone, see if it's better. All right, just uh, bear with me as I refresh this. Hmm, doesn't look too good. Uh, let me exit out quickly and uh, continue see if it's better. All right, I did get the command prop here. Yeah. All right, uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, deploy a Kubernetes cluster. So using kind, so this is just a really simple test cluster. Um, basically, what I'm having is I have three worker nodes. And one thing I'm interesting, you may find it interesting, is I'm actually def uh, disable the default CNI. I believe in kind, the default CNI is kind, uh, it's kind in the net. And the reason I disable that is because I want to install Cilium on it, right? I don't want the two CNI. Sometimes when you have multiple CNI, if it doesn't chain correctly, it would actually cause troubles. So that's uh, why I'm uh, disabled that. So uh, the, right now it's kind of a stand up uh, the kind cluster for me. And, uh, and uh, I'm going to, so the next thing I'm doing, going to do, let's walk through this correct, uh, uh, quickly as we stand up our cluster, is we're going to download the Cilium CNI. So I'm not sure if you know, uh, the Cilium CNI uh, instruction is pretty straightforward. Uh, the only thing worth highlighting is when I install Cilium, I, I find out the CNI actually has a different version than the Cilium control plane and CNI and the agent. So that was a little bit confusing when I tried it. So making sure, you know, when you install CNI, uh, as long as you understand the versions are not necessarily the same, uh, it should be pretty straightforward. So, um, so right now I'm just going to remove the binary um, that I installed. So you can see I have the CNI. Yeah, this is what uh, got me when I first tried to install Cilium. So the CNI is like 0. Point some version, 15. And now uh, what's happening next? By the way, can you guys see is the font big enough for people in the back? It's good? Perfect. Thank you. So we're going to install Cilium. So um, you can see I'm installed the latest version of Cilium, which is 1.14. I'm disabling layer 7 proxy because uh, I don't really need it. And I'm um, installing it in the kube system and uh, I'm setting up IPAM mode as Kubernetes. And uh, I really like the Cilium status command. So it shows uh, one of my nodes is still upcoming running, I believe. So you can see it's a little bit taking a little bit like 40 seconds to set up a Cilium typically. So it's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, in the meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead, uh, install, uh, enable Hubble, right? Remember we talked about Hubble is the observability UI provided by Cilium, really provides you visibility into what's going on within your networking, um, the pods, communication between the pods. So um, now if we do Cilium status command, everything is good, awesome. So the next thing we're going to do is install Istio. We're going to first download the Istio 1.19 binary, and then we're just going to install the demo profile because it has uh, everything I need, uh, including like the, the egress gateway, because by default we don't um, deploy egress gateway because we don't know if you need uh, external traffic uh, control, but the demo profile has ingress and egress gateway. Um, so it has everything I need. Um, so one thing about Istio Cuddle command, it runs a little bit slower than the Cilium command to install. The reason is when you finish Istio Cuddle install, everything is actually up running. So when you have that checkbox on, 
Oh, sorry, I think I missed the command. So let me go ahead and install the sample as well. So the reason I install sample is because it has like the Kayali, Grafana, all these other components to help me show visibility. So if I do a Kubernetes um, kubectl get pass, uh, you can see uh, all my Istio components are running. Um, and uh, right now it's trying to bring up the uh, the add-on, which is this observability components. Um, all right, so that's essentially this particular lab, uh, just to help uh, bring up everything in start. And uh, with that, I'm going to move forward to the next section, which we will talk about deploy sample application and uh, in, uh, apply network policy on top of that. So think of uh, cross the network still with me here. I'm a little bit nervous when the network doesn't work. Yeah. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to wait for the command prompt first. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to deploy a network policy uh, called a Cilium network policy. And the name is it's called Lockdown Namespace Egress. So inside of this uh, policy, we essentially say, for the default namespace, uh, whichever um, label matches uh, default, which is the default namespace, we're going to deny access to the word, which means outside of your cluster. And, and uh, we do want to allow access to inside of your cluster, which is why you have the egress block and also the egress deny block. Let me click on refresh. Hopefully it would come up. So I actually um, stepped a little bit on this when I first tried the denying policy with Cilium because it was not obvious to me that you have to specify both egress and egress deny. So essentially you have to explicitly allow what's allowed and, what's, uh, and then the rest is denied. Okay, looks like it's still transfer the data. Um, I'm going to try to hit refresh, see if it's going to help. Think across. I don't know why I have to refresh again. All right, looks like it's running. So let's go ahead and deploy the Cilium network policy, uh, it's, which will apply to the default namespace as we just discussed. And the next thing we're going to do is deploy sample sleep and HTTP Bing application. And let's make sure the, oops, sorry. Let's make sure the application is running. Uh, wait until they are running. And then the next we are going to do is uh, we're going to um, try to access um, from the sleep pod to HTTP Bing, right? So that works, that's expe expected. Now remember the denying policy we set, right? So if you access from sleep to cur, uh, HTTP.org, remember we set the denying policy, not allow everything uh, outside of the cluster. The word uh, is what uh, means in Cilium network policy. So this actually hangs. So what I'm going to do is control C, exit outside of here. Um, so, uh, so you can see, uh, we talk about Hubble, right? So that's me set up port forwarding to port forwarding uh, 12.0.0.0 to Hubble UI. And now if I launch Hubble UI, I'm going to hit the refresh button, finger cross it's working. And when I hit the uh, default, you can see, right, Cilium uh, CNI enforce the network policy and drop all the package outside of my, reaching outside of the cluster, which is, and capture it in Hubble, so very nice, right? So the next thing we're going to do, so we kind of apply the layer three, layer four policy through Cilium network policy. Um, and we said, hey, sleep, and actually being in your default namespace, you can't access anything outside of the cluster. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is apply some layer seven policy. So finger cross on the next um, lab is going to load well, so we can do the demo. All right, uh, looks like uh, 
it's going to load and uh, hopefully oh this time we got a little bit lucky all right so um now we are going to add our application to the mesh so with ambient i don't need to restart the pod but unfortunately uh, we're still working on selim integration with ambient so uh, so I will demo using sidecar for now. So what I'm doing is label the default namespace for injection and I kind of rolling restart the pod, right? So uh, assuming my pod is running, I, you can see it's coming up. Um, so this is an extra step we're hoping to eliminate with Ambient. You wouldn't need to uh, restart the pod. Uh, with Ambient, it's really simplify operation. It's just right now, uh, the Cilium integration with Ambient, uh, we don't have the network policy from Cilium enforced. There are some technical challenges we're going through in the community. Um, all right, so our pods are running and uh, let's do some tests. In this case, uh, you can see the first test continue works and the only difference is uh, in Istio sidecar, we propagate some of the headers we needed for tracing, which is why you see the XB3 headers. The second command fail, and it actually fails with a much better error because uh, the sidecar proxy knows the upstream, we can't connect to the upstream, which is HTTP.org within a certain time frame, and it times out, right? So what we're going to do next is enforce uh, zero trust, right? So first thing we're doing is in the entire mesh, we're going to en enable strict mutual TLS. So you have to have strict mutual TLS before you can talk to each other for any application in the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, the second thing we are doing is Remember our zero trust principle, we said we're going to deny everything and de allow nothing, right? So this is especially uh, in Istio authorization policy to say, I don't want to allow anything. Um, and now we're going to gradually enable this privilege access, uh, right? So we're going to enable access from uh, sleep to HTTP being and only allow the get access, right? So let's go ahead and run some tests. Okay, so the first command it still works, right? Because there's no, uh, well, with the zero trust uh, in place, it still works because we do allow the get access, right? So the second command is the delete uh, method, right? In this case, it fails with 405, which is method not allow because it's still policy was enforcing it. And the third command, continue fail, right? Because in this case, we haven't configured anything to uh, read, to allow the sleep to reach uh, outside of the cluster. So let's uh, go ahead and control the egress traffic. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to config um, for any request to, um, to the hgbbean.org, we're going to route the traffic to Istio egress gateway. Um, so let's go ahead and configure that. And that traffic needs to be uh, Istio uh, mutual TLS. And then from the gateway, we're going to originate TLS connection to call HTTPS HTTPBean.org. Uh, the other thing is because uh, the HTTPBean.org is not a service in Kubernetes. So in order for you to register the external service in Istio, you register with service entry. And last not the least, uh, let's go ahead and config the egress gateway uh, to say, hey, I want the traffic coming to me uh, on port 80 to be Istio Mutual uh, from httpbean.org. So that ensures from sleep to httpbean.org, uh, it's, I'm sorry, to sleep to egress gateway is using uh, mutual TLS. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and run the same command. You can see uh, now we can access httpbean.org slash headers. Everything is good. Uh, Istio currently has a bug to remove these. Uh, this is already fixed, but uh, we haven't had a development build uh, since yet, so I couldn't demo that. Uh, so let's generate some traffic. So what we're doing is generate a bunch of traffic from sleep to httpbean.org and also to sleep.httpbean uh, uh, service. And then let's go ahead also enable access to Grafana and, uh, 
and Kayali. So we talk about Hubble to view observability, right? So in Istio, we have our own dashboard, uh, which allows you to view layer seven uh, data, a little bit more uh, data than what you can see from a network layer. So for example, I can enable traffic animation with Kayali and uh, I can see the traffic going on. I can see mutual TLS icon. Like if I click on any of these links here, I can get HTTP metrics about response time, request time. Uh, we also have a nice uh, dashboard provided by Istio. So if you go to uh, Istio dashboard here, uh, you can see the Istio entire mesh dashboard. So you have all these uh, metrics available for you, like, like request volume, you know, P90 latency, P99, successful rate. So all these are available for you because you enrolled your application into the mesh. All right, I think that's the end of my demo. So let me wrap up. I think we're reaching close to the end of the session as well. So, um, so what we talk about is zero trust is trust nothing by default, right? And defense in depth really help you enhance your security posture with, uh, uh, with network policy from Cilium or other CNI and uh, layer seven policy from a service mesh like Istio. Um, so we definitely highly recommend you to layer them together. It's part of the best practice we recommend in the Istio community and I think by a lot of uh, security company too. Um, so with that, I'd like to uh, see if you guys have any questions. Do we have time for questions or no? Yes, no? Okay, yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Did I put you all to sleep? No? All right, thank you. Can you hear? Yeah. Uh, so how problematic is transfers from default CNIs to let's say Istio and this higher CNI level. Can you repeat the Can you repeat the question again? Um, how complicated is to migrate from a default CNI to Istion? Okay, that's a great question. So, like I was mentioning, right? Istio is not a CNI. Like we don't necessarily participate, implement the CNI spec. We don't necessarily. Um, uh, enroll into like your pod IP address configuration as your pod gets added. We don't necessarily config the pod uh, IP tables, right? So Istio is designed to be complementary to your CNI. Uh, Istio sidecar today works with any CNI, right? We're trying to reach the same with the new ambient sidecar architecture with Istio. It's our intention to also be compatible with any other CNI. In fact, we recommend you to layer your CNI with service mesh together so you can achieve defense in depth. Does that answer your question? Well, I, my question was more if you have, a, let's say, a Kubernetes cluster with a default setup and default networking, uh, how complicated it is to implement service mesh with the new CNI and Istio? Okay, so, so the question is not only you want to implement Istio, you're also interested maybe uh, migrate from your default uh, CNI to a preferred CNI. That's it. Okay, I would recommend you to do it uh, step by step. So first, uh, I guess I would ask you why the default uh, CNI doesn't work for you, right? So you want to first look at that. So making sure you have a reason to move to a, a new, different CNI before you do that, because the fact that you need to migrate CNI, it can be a little bit tricky with data downtime, right? 
Because the way CNI migration normally works is you would uh, coordinate the node, right? You would move like the paths running on a particular node to other nodes and kind of uh, update the CNI or migrate the CNI to a different CNI on that particular node and then you do it one node at a time. So it could be a little bit more complicated and you have to be very careful planning that. Um, so definitely ask your, yourself that question. Do you need to really need to migrate to a different CNI? And then for service mesh, I would also ask you, you know, what benefits are you trying to get out of the service mesh? Do you need service mesh on this particular feature or that specific feature before you include uh, your services into the mesh? And I would recommend you to do it gradually, right? Pick the feature that's most important for you and then start right there as you migrate to uh, enroll your application into your service mesh. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for that great question. Any other questions? Well, if not, thank you so much for attending and enjoy the rest of OSS Summit and beautiful Bebao. So thank you so much.